What's up, guys? Welcome back to my Elden Ring complete walkthrough. Hope you guys are doing well today. Um, in this episode, we are going to knock out pretty much this entire northern section of Limgrave. Um, so we're basically going to make a, a, a wide sweep from west to east, and we're going to accomplish a lot today. Um, in the last episode, I got this new weapon, the Bloodhound Fang. I mentioned it's going to be my primary weapon for most of the rest of the playthrough. I realized that I barely have the stats to use it. And those of you who are following this walkthrough may not have these stats yet to be able to use this weapon yet. So for a bulk of this episode, I'm actually going to switch back to the Uji Katana because I don't want to make you guys feel like if you can't equip this weapon yet, that you're not going to be able to do the things that I do in this video. So um, I'm going to go ahead and equip the Uji Katana just to show that, you know, this is still a very viable weapon. And then once we get enough um, runes to kind of level up a time or two again, um, I'll switch to the Bloodhound's Fang, uh, just because I feel like more of you who might be following this build to the T will be able to equip it by that point. I don't, I don't want to exclude any of you who may not be able to equip it at this point in your playthrough. Um, so I'm going to, as I said, use the Uji Katana for a bit. Um, that said, I'm going to throw back on my 100% damage, physical damage blocking shield, the uh, Beast Crest Heater Shield. And I'm also going to throw on the torch because if you remember, I had to unequip those things because I was too heavy with the uh, heavier sword that we had equipped there with the Bloodhound Fang. But now that we have the lighter Uji Katana equipped, um, I can put all my normal stuff back on. So let's see. We're going to start things off by warping here to uh, Stormhill Shack. And then we are going to carry on eastward from there and kind of making little detours uh, along the way. Um... So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go right here. There's an item we want. And then next, we're going to go up here. So I'm just going to mark these on my map. So that way I have these little waypoints on my compass. That'll help me navigate. So you see there's a uh, giant troll here. We're going to kill him first. You guys know how to kill these by now. Um, go for the ankles. Get the stagger. And uh, get the critical hits. So two charge, two fully charged attacks on the ankles will knock them over. And then we're gonna have to do this twice, as you guys probably know by now. We've killed a few of these, and these guys do yield a decent amount of runes, so it is nice. Make sure that when they stomp, you try to roll away from it. This has taken th three hits for the stagger, but that's perfectly okay. Probably should have been two-handing my weapon, but. It is what it is. All right, sweet. So what we came up here for is this item right here. And this is the Strength Not Crystal tier. This is something that we can use in our Wondrous Physic Potion when we get that flask. We don't have the flask yet, but we're probably going to get it, I would say, in the next episode after this one. Um, and it's, I'm actually probably going to include that in my concoction. So, um, from there we're going to, uh, I'll, I'll explain that when we get there, when we get that flask in more detail, but for now, we're just going to drop down here and head up North to our next little marker. We got to go through this point in the gate. So I'm going to mark the little hole in the gate. So that way I go to the right spot. Um, as I said before, if you hit these little beacons that you place, it'll automatically take it off your map, which is pretty nice. Uh, I'm going to stay on horseback just to show you guys. This is actually an invasion that's going to happen. So it'll knock me off my horse automatically once I get to the spot where the invasion happens. Um, this guy is that's going to invade us is, is a bit powerful. He has a, a, a large weapon. So I'm going to use my shield to, to try to block the damage if he does get a hit. Um, he leaves himself open, though. Like, when he does his big slams, he leaves himself open, which I missed my my shot, unfortunately. There we go. There we go. And he does not have much poise. Oops. I need to heal up here, guys. So, yeah, after that big jump attack... Whoop. His weapon is so slow, and our, our katana is relatively fast that it makes it easy to get, get hits in, even just when you're right next to him. I'm just kind of mashing R1 right now. Just make sure that you're away from his uh, swings. There we go. 
So he's not easy, but he's also not overwhelming. Uh, for our trouble, we get the um, Hammer Talisman. So that uh, increases stamina reducing attacks against blockers. So you know those guys that have their, their great shields and whatnot? Um, this will, if you equip that, it'll make it easier to break their guard if you're hitting them. Someone who's blocking with a shield all the time. And then up here, we get uh, some stuff for competitive multiplayer. Um, the small red effigy and the duelist furled finger. So this will allow you to drop what's called a red sign. So when people, you're walking around and you see summon signs on the ground. If you see a red sign, that's going to summon an invader. And uh, we'll, we'll engage in PvP at that point. Um, so from here, we're actually going to uh, warp down here to the War Master Shack. It's just going to save us a little bit of horseback riding. And then our next destination is going to be over here. There's a catacombs that we're going to head to. Um, while we're here, as I said before, this is a good spot to pick up root resins, which you, which you need to... You'll need that if you want to um, craft any of the grease items. I'm just making sure that we're at the right time of day. Yeah, we're in the middle of the night. I want to pass the time to the morning. It's a, Well, we're not in the middle of the night. It was about to be nighttime. So I'm going to advance the time to the morning because I don't want to run into any late night shenanigans. Um, so we've already cleared out this camp. I think this is where we actually got this shield that I'm wearing now. So we're going to run right through it. And, and our goal is just to get to these catacombs that are just ahead of us. Um, you got to climb up this cliff just a bit to get there. And here we are. Got this little ghost. To refuse the Erd Tree's call to return to live within death. Sickening. All right. So we got ourselves another catacombs. And it's going to look very similar to the other ones we've been to. I'm going to two-hand my weapon here. Just give me a little bit more oomph. There's a lot of skeleton enemies in this particular catacombs. Um... And so remember, when you kill a skeleton enemy, you're going to have to kill, like, their glowing uh, little wispy stuff that, if you, don't, if you don't hit them again when they're dead, you'll see that they'll kind of glow with a white wisp. If you don't hit that again, they're going to respawn indefinitely. So you just got to make sure that once you, once you take out all their damage, see that wispy, you got to hit that. Otherwise, they're going to respawn. Um, got another guy here. And uh, I'm using the Uji Katana, as I said. You, I, I, have, I have the stats for the Bloodhound's Fang. And if you have the stats for the Bloodhound's Fang and want to use it in here, you're going to hit harder. And it's probably going to be a little bit easier for you even. So I'd even encourage you equipping it if you have it. Um, I, as again, I'm just using this just to, uh, just to demonstrate that if you don't have the stats to use it quite yet, you'll still be just fine. Ow. All right. Not a great situation. Sometimes retreating is your best option. And there's no shame in getting yourself in a better position. All right, so I got to keep these guys from coming back. There we go. Now this guy with the bow. You pick this up because we'll be able to uh, use it to upgrade our our summons later. Okay, so we're gonna head on down through here, and there's gonna be a lot of skeletons in this room. So I'm gonna use my bow to just kind of lure some of them over before. Hey, yeah, see, there's a couple of them. I don't want to be fighting a bunch of them at once. There we go. Now he's coming over. That's what I want to see. There's three more of them in here that are spawned. And 
And there's gonna be some above us that are trying to snipe us. So don't linger in this room because there's there's guys above us shooting us. We're gonna get upstairs in just a bit. All right, got some more grave glove warp. And here is our switch that we need to unlock the boss door. For those of you who have played Bloodborne, these these dungeons in particular remind me a lot of the Chalice dungeons in Bloodborne. And then, you know, since we unlock the switch, you guys behind us just spawn. So I'm going to lure them in here. Especially because you can see those guys up there with the with the with the uh, bow and arrow. So better to fight these guys in here while you're not getting sniped. And this guy, I'm going to fight him under the archway so we uh, can fight him without getting sniped. 1v1 here. So in there, we picked up a blood rose. That is a crafting item used for, as you can imagine, crafting blood type uh, items. You can use it to craft blood grease when we get that recipe um, and other blood related items. Blood roses are, are very good for that purpose, as you could imagine. Human bone shard and other crafting material. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. That was almost a death. I was not paying attention at all to my health. <laughs> that was almost really bad. <laughs> Disaster averted. So there's three archers up here. Just wonderful. Yeah, you can you can knock him over the edge, which makes him not so much a problem. Oops. As long as you stay mobile, they're not so bad. I'm gonna pop off my health here while I'm at it. So here we have another Uji Katana. So we started with the Uji Katana. Now we have two of them. So I'm going to introduce a concept in this game called power stancing. What power stancing is, is if you equip an item, or, a, or I should say a weapon in your right hand, and then if your left hand, if you place a weapon of the same type. So in this case, another katana. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. In this case, it will be exactly the same because I have two Uji katanas. But um, there are other katanas in the game, and if you equip two katanas, it doesn't matter if they're... Uji katanas or any other type of katana, or if you equip two uh, curved great swords, it doesn't matter which great sword they are, just two 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 curved great swords or two um, anything else. Uh, you're going to activate what you would call in this game power stancing. And what that means is you have two of the same. You're basically dual wielding, um, and so you can dual wield as long as you have a weapon of the same type in each hand. And what that how you how you would actually go about doing that is if you press L1, um, you activate these attacks that use both of your weapons at the same time. So you can do these combos just by pressing L1. Um, and, and again, the only way that you can do that is if you have a, a weapon of the same type equipped in each hand uh, to dual wield. Um, so this allows for uh, some pretty compelling gameplay options. Um, power stancing with uh, katanas especially for those of you who are for folks who uh, basically dedicate themselves to a bleed build in their playthrough, power stancing katanas is an incredible way to go about the game because um, you can just you can stack up the bleed like ridiculously with with two with with two katanas. Especially later on in the game, we're actually going to unlock bleed scaling, and so if you have two bleed bleed scaled katanas um, with other blood related um, buffs that you can put on them later on in the game. I mean, you can just stack the bleed, and it just it 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 is it just melts through enemies. It melts through bosses. Um, I actually considered doing a blood build um, for this playthrough, but I decided against it because I I can't predict the future, but I think it's likely that because bleed is so powerful in this game, I think it's. There, there's a decent likelihood that it'll get nerfed. And I want this walkthrough to be something that will withstand the test of time. So I don't want I don't want my build in this walkthrough to be something that I think could get nerfed. 
Um, you never know. It might happen. It might not. Um, but uh, I, I, I just want to make sure that I don't use a build in this game that, you know, they release a new patch a month from now, and then the, the build that I use in the walkthrough is nerfed, and, is, and then therefore the walkthrough is no longer any good. Um, that's what I was trying to avoid. Um, so if you want to do the power stancing route with dual katanas, you're going to do a lot of blood damage, and, and, and the possibilities are, are, are really compelling uh, with that type of build, I will say. Um, if you're going to power stance, I would rec I would recommend because this other Uji katana that we just picked up is is unupgraded. I would recommend upgrading this as high as you can at this point in time if you're gonna if you're gonna dual wield your katanas like that. Um, and again, it doesn't have to be katanas. It just has to it has to be you know it can be any any type of weapon. They just have to be the same type that you're using in each hand in order to dual wield like that. Um, I'm gonna go back here and heal up before fighting the boss. Uh, so yeah, blood blood builds are are insane. Um, now now the the weapon that I'm gonna be using primarily once you know in, in just a bit the Bloodhound Fang, um, it also has bleed buildup, but it's also a really powerful weapon even without the blood buildup. The blood buildup to me is just a bonus. Uh, so even if they nerf blood or even if they nerf bleed later on, I'm I'm not gonna be distraught about that. Um, so in here we have our first Black Knife Assassin. Um, he starts off with low health. I'm not sure why, but, um, you know, he, he is, uh, he is very fast. You obviously can summon in here. I'm not summoning right now, but you can summon, uh, to help. The, the, these, these guys are very unpredictable. Um, but they do leave themselves open after attack, but they have, they have very like quick and hard to follow attacks. Um, so what, what I typically like to do is I like to bait their attacks and then after his combo or whatever. Yeah, that, that, that attack where he drags his weapon on the ground, that's a very easy attack to punish. I just want to make sure you kind of keep your distance and wait to see what he does. Because he can he can close the gap really quickly, as you just saw. Um, so you, you, you want to make sure that you keep a healthy distance. You can also use your shield to block, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, see, he, he can dodge really fast and then kind of lunge at you and attack. He's got some pretty powerful attacks, but he's almost dead. And as I said, if you're struggling with this fight, you can also summon. Um, there we go. Got him. And for our trouble, we get the Assassin's Crimson Dagger. Extremely good talisman that I'm probably going to equip as soon as I get another talisman pouch later on in the game. What that does is anytime you do a critical hit, um, so whether that be a backstab or, you know, you, you get a critical after a stagger, it recovers a decent chunk of your health. And and that is amazing, especially because, you know, in, in certain sections where I do a lot of stealth and backstabs, every time you get one of those backstabs, you're recovering health. And that is a really, really good, uh, a really good boost. So in here we got Death Root. Um, that is an item uh, we can't use yet, but we'll be we'll be getting there probably, we'll be, we'll be able to use it probably in the next episode. It's actually an item that you have to give to an NPC, and then they give you stuff in return for it. So, pretty good stuff. All right, so we are done with these catacombs. Not too shabby. Um, I'm going to go in here and level up. Let's see. I'm going to level up um, Endurance to, ch to get my equipment load beefed up a bit. Uh, let's see. Do I have... I, I probably have some runes, too. Do I? No, not really. <laughs> it's all good, though. Um, let's see. So, I am going to go... Let's see here. Uh, there is... Some stuff up here. There's a rune over here, and then there's uh, some stuff up here that we're going to get. So, we're going to do that next. few enemies over here. You can kill them if you'd like. Homeboy with the Great Shield is, is your biggest threat in this area. But these guys are not very powerful. Got, some, got a guy with the crossbow. This is what we're after. The Great Rune Tier 3. Or the Golden Rune Tier 3, rather. 
So where we're going next. It's up through here. And there's going to be another one of these uh, giant golems. Um, we've killed one of these before. But as as before, when they're getting when he's getting up, charge attack on the ankles and you'll get a stagger. So he hasn't even gotten up yet. Didn't even have a chance to hit me. And then do your critical attack. Kind of right in his abdomen. And he is dead before he was even alive. All right. So what we came here for is the Lance Talisman. Um, enhances your attacks on horseback. So pretty solid. So where we're headed next um, is right here. We're going to go up here, and then there's an NPC right there that we're going to talk to. And I think this might be too steep to jump off of. So we might have to go kind of, yeah, that's too steep. I have to kind of go around a bit. There we go. I think we can jump off right here. Hello? Can you hear me? Help me. I'm stuck. All right. So somebody needs our help. And there's a uh, Crimson Scarab if you need the flasks. I've got full flasks right now. So I'll go here to knock out this. Um, beacon off my map. So here's who we came here for. This be Alexander, our friendly neighborhood pot. Oh, my stars. I'm so happy to see you. I am Alexander, also known as the Iron Fist. And as you can see, I'm stuck here. Please, can you help me out of this? Of course you will. A thousand thanks. Just give me a good smack from the rear with something nice and big. And I'll pop clean out, I'm sure. Okay. So he is friendly. I'm very well trained. Give it your all, I say. But the only way we can get him out is by giving him a good whack with our weapon a few times. And he's not going to break. This is how you, you get him unstuck. There we go. Almost felt the end of me. <laughs> ah. Well, I'm out now, and that's what counts. I thank you. And as a token of my appreciation, I'd like you to have this. All right, so for our trouble, we'll get some exalted flesh. Once again, the pleasure is mine. I am the warrior jar known as... Iron Fist, Alexander. I journey to the east, where I intend to further my education in the ways of war. And beyond these lands lie the scarlet, rot-blighted Kalid Wilds. And upon their southern edge is Redmain Castle, in which a festival of combat is being held. I'd heard whispers of such festivities before. Doesn't the notion set your breast a flutter? <laughs> I'm heading to Redmain. Okay, so he mentions a festival. We'll be getting there eventually. Um, much, much later in the game, but we'll be getting there. Uh, let's see. So we'll take this off. Our next spot to go is actually up here. But first, we got to kind of shimmy on down here.
Okay, so across this bridge, we have a pumpkin head. Remember when he was a boss? Now he's just a regular old enemy. And it's a testament to how strong we become since the very beginning of the game, because look at that. That's all it takes. Definitely attack from behind instead of the front because his head is armored, and if you hit the if you hit his helmet, it does not really do anything. Alright, so this way get our smithing stones. Well, actually, where we're headed now, we have to jump into that uh, spirit spring jump. Um, so I probably should have just stayed up here and, and went down there. Oh, well, it's all good. We, we killed the pumpkin head. He actually, but since he's a regular enemy, he's actually going to respawn anyways, but oh, well, whatever. It's all good. So make sure that you jump inside of this, this little vortex, because it'll negate all your fall damage. If you don't jump kind of near that close enough, uh, you're going to die. So, uh, these guys, I think we fought one before. We don't really need to fight these guys, but just as a reminder how to kill them, you want to make sure you hit them in like kind of their, their beak or their snout. Two jump attacks will do the trick to get a critical, and now this other one wants to play. That's just wonderful. And they drop crafting materials. Oh, since this other one's so eager, I might as well kill him too. I wasn't planning on it, but whatever. They drop the land octopus ovaries, which are used for crafting uh, some stuff. So where we're headed next is a uh, cave area all the way down at the end here. Right there is where our cave is. Now, it might be tempting to explore off this edge. That water is death, so do not go there. Um, where we're headed now is this cave. And this cave is actually very intricate. You're going to want a torch because it is very dark in here. Um, so if you don't have a torch, head back to that first church from the beginning of the game and pick one up. This might be the most intricate cave type level uh, dungeon that we've been been through. Uh, so drop on down. There's a lot of stuff in here. And a lot of wolves. Attacking from afar. Always a good idea if you can do it. You notice back there, there's a spot to drop down. We're going to drop down in just a sec. Got one sleepy guy, and then we got another, the white wolf, which the, the white ones, if you recall, have a bit more HP, and they hit a little bit harder as well. So we got a golden rune tier one coming all the way down here. And again, if you have a torch equipped, you can press L1 to raise your torch in the air. Just give yourself a little bit more light. So where we're going to go now is uh, we're going to drop on down here. All the way down. It's a long drop. Okay. So I think this way's a dead end. It just has some crafting stuff. Cave moss. This is the way that we want to go. And as I said, if you can attack from a, from afar, why not? There's a couple dogs down there. I should say wolves. Let's see if you go this way. Another wolf. Get some uh, artery, ar arteria uh, leaves. I don't know how to say that word. But to get three of them. Those are pretty good for crafting. You can make some good craft, uh, crafted items with those. Um, you could drop down from there, but we're going to take the long way. So we backtracked a little bit. We're going to take the long way down. We're going to get to the same spot. Ambush. In the truest sense of the word. Through the bush. <laughs> All right. So we turn back this way.
that up there was that corpse we just looted the uh, the the leaves off of, and you can actually that item down there that we just got you could actually see from up there. I um, mean, you can just drop down here if you wanted to, but we took the long way down. All right, so this is where things get interesting. In this here spot, there's a bunch of bats, so see it from far away. Two shots with the bow should take care of it. There's another one right there. I hate fighting them up close because since they fly in the air, they're kind of tricky to hit with your melee weapon. So if you can use range on them, I suggest using range. See some more over here. Smithing stone tier one, get three of them. drop down here and there's some bats in this cave jump attacks is the way that I prefer to, to handle these things smithing stone tier 2 and a golden rune tier 4 nice okay so there's some more bats that we're going to hit before we drop down. Um, my, my, the best way to do it is just to lock on and then shoot twice as quickly as you can with your bow, if you have a bow. Or if you have spells, whatever, whatever ranged attack you have. Uh, that one I didn't get the second hit off quite, quite quickly enough. But he's standing still, so that worked out just as much. Okay. There's a one down there. And then another one down there. And that second one, there we go. Okay. So what you need to do here is you just want to drop straight off this waterfall. Do not go for that jump because you're probably not going to make it. And if you fall kind of in that darkish water, you're going to fall to your death. So just step right off that waterfall and you'll fall right down here. And then now you can jump over here. Now that we've killed all these bats, they're not going to bother us. You can get the uh, Shamshir, which is a uh, dex weapon, curved sword. Um, so you see that item over there. So the way that you get to that item is you got to jump this way. Uh, let's see here. So I'm going to pick up this. Head this way. And we got another giant land octopus to deal with. Whoop. Oh, he was not happy to see us. That's okay. But uh, same, same song and dance as before. Jump attacks on the beak, and then critical attacks when you can. He's got a couple of his babies around here, or her babies. Single jump attack, good enough to dispose of them. All right, so we got a uh, fur calling finger remedy. Uh, this, you know, the tutorial's up on the screen. This is the first one of these that we found. What these do, do is they reveal summon signs of players from other worlds. So whether they be a cooperative sign for co-op or whether they be uh, a PVP sign for an invasion, uh, these kind of reveal the signs on the ground. So we're gonna go this way, drop down right over here. And this will take us to the boss. So I'm going to put my shield in two hand, my weapon here. And um, this boss is going to be a uh, giant golem with more HP than the ones we fought before. Might be a good idea to summon when you get in here. But same strategy as always, hit the ankles. This guy though is a bit more aggressive than the ones we've found before. So don't get greedy. That's my advice so i hit him twice and then yeah you want to see he hits with his with his uh axe he hits really hard so just be mindful all right knocked him over 
We're going to go over and get the critical. And in this case, one critical is not going to kill him. He's, we're going to have to create at least two. Yeah, that did a lot of damage, but not enough to actually kill him. So three, three more criticals as he's getting back up. Hit him again. And we're done. And you can also, of course, or I can't. I I didn't I didn't catch it. I, I I didn't see if there was a summon sign on the side where I could summon uh, spirit ashes. But regardless, uh, victory is ours. So we got the blue dancer charm. Um, it raises your attack power with a lower equipment load. So what that means is if you have this equipped, your attack power is going to be higher the less you weigh. Um, so that really doesn't benefit you all that much unless your equipment load is quite low. Um, so that's not really going to be something that helps us out all that much since, you know, we're, we're staying medium, but our equipment load is still relatively heavy, heavy in order for that to uh, to really be worth using. So we will go on and return to the entrance here. So uh, what I'm going to do now is instead of leveling up right away, we're going to warp back here. And um, there's a merchant that we're going to come across. I'm going to make sure that I can buy everything from him before I level up that I want to get. And you can fight this pumpkin head again. As I said, he respawns. You can fight him on horseback as well. All right, let's see what's for sale here. There's a merchant right over here. You can see that campfire. I'm going to get the I'm going to get the turtle first, see if he he's got any uh goodies for me. Oh, sweet turtleneck meat. Okay, that's for a stamina increased stamina regen. So what how, how I typically use like these items that buff you is if I struggle with the boss, I'll I'll put something on that might might boost my stats a bit. All right, talk to him. Oh dear. You might I terribly sorry. Uh are you here as a customer? Okay, so he's got a cracked pot. I'll buy that. He also has some smithing stones, a uh, nomadic warrior's cookbook for pickled turtlenecks, poison arrows, and pick that up. Some allows for more crafting. Got a short sword. And then he has this uh, note. I'll buy it so you don't have to. I'll show you what it says. Okay. Uh, so let's see here. This note, flame chariots. Beware the fire amongst chariots bearing the faces of giants. A well-aimed blow to the chimney on top may prove effective, but opportunities for a plunging attack will be rare indeed. So we haven't encountered that enemy type yet. But, uh, we will before too, too long. So where we're going to go is the, um, we're going to head on down. There's an NPC right here. There's no mistake. He's there. Death has left its mark once again. Oh, these guys are going to not leave me alone. So I'm going to take care of them first. Make sure you hit them the second time. Or if you if you damn it if you kill them with a a a holy based weapon, you don't have to kill them the second time. A, a holy based weapon will will end them once and for all as soon as you as soon as you get the kill. All right. Now let's go back and have our friendly conversation here. I'm sorry, I cannot give you your proper right. Ah, a tarnished are you? I'm known as D. I hunt down those who live in death and weed their death root. Heed my warning. The village here has been touched by death. And worse yet, it is home to a mariner. If you value your life, then go no further. The village here has turned back. Okay. 
So this village that we're coming up on is what he's talking about. There's a mini boss there. He tries to scare you away. It's not too much to be worried about, though. Nothing more than anything we've already encountered. So we're going to rest up here. I'm going to do some leveling up. And I'm going to advance the clock as well. Because I think it's uh, it's pretty much dusk right now. So, uh, level on up here. I'm going to put some points into endurance. So I can carry a heavier load. So at this point in time, this is where I'm going to officially switch to the Bloodhound Fang. Um, got a couple more levels. So those of you who have been following my build should be able to uh, to equip um, the Bloodhound Fang by now. If, if, that's what you've, if, if that's what you've been going for. So I'm going to go ahead and equip that. Um... Here we go. Throw this on. And I should... Uh, let me see. Am I still... Yes, I'm medium load. So I put a couple points into endurance to uh, raise my equipment load capacity. And so now I'm medium load even with my, my good shield. So no need to change equipment. But now we've got the Bloodhound's Fang equipped. So good stuff. So over here, this is the, the, the thing that D was talking about. So I'm going to do a, a dismount heavy. I'm going to two-hand my weapon as well. So she can summon uh, skeletons to help her. But I, I actually don't even worry about them. Charge heavy. I'm going to do my special... Look at how much damage that special does. That's pretty insane. And it got a stagger right away. So that's why I love this weapon. The, the, the special is too good to pass up. I'm going to do another one right here. So again, how I'm doing that is I'm, I'm pressing L2 for the special. And then immediately after the L2, I'm pressing R2 for the follow-up attack. And when you do both of them together, oh, so good. So we got another death root. And we got the Skeletal uh, Minutemen Ashes. So now that we're done with that, we're just going to have a quick uh, look around here. So what we have here is our first uh, Stone Sword Key door. I think this is our first one that we're actually going to go inside. And we, if you've been following this walkthrough, you should have a few stone sword keys at your disposal. We're going to use one of them to get through this door. And once you use them, you can't get them back. But th the game gives you way more keys than there are doors. So um, down here, there's a bunch of turtles. If you want to um, get yourself a few of the, uh, the turtle neck meats, you can do that. You can kill all of these. I'm not going to kill all of them right now, but they're down here if you want them. But in here, that's what we're after. And this is the green turtle talisman. So this is a talisman that you can equip that enhances your stamina regeneration rate. So for those of you who are familiar with Dark Souls, it's basically the Chlorinthy ring of this game. Very solid. Uh, let's see. So what we're going to do now is... Um, up here, there's some stuff. I'm not really all that concerned about the enemies around here. Whoops. Okay, got some smithing stones. There is a golden rune tier four. 
Not too shabby. We get a good view of the Erd tree right here. Pretty cool, huh? Alrighty. So, uh, what we need to do now is we need to report back to D. All right, we will accept. Show me your map. I've marked the location for you of a hidden gateway. It will lead you to Garank, the beast clergyman. All righty. So here on our map, this is the spot that he marked. We're going to get there in the next episode. I mean, this is the guy that we turn in our death roots to. We have two of them. We got two of them today. I think there's a total of nine of them. In the game. Um, where we're headed now is over here. I'm going to rest up real quick before going there. Maybe get another level. I think we should be able to get another level. Uh, I can if I pop some rune items. Which I'm going to do. Okay, I'll level up my HP here. And level 24. We're making some pretty solid progress on our levels. And eventually, of course, we're going to get to Stormville Castle. Um, I would recommend being about level 30 for Stormville Castle, which is the first uh, main dungeon of the game. And uh, we're... We're well on our way to, to level 30. And it doesn't have to be level 30, but, but you know, in the vicinity of level 30, I would say probably 27 or 28 is the lowest that I'd want to go there. Um, so where we're headed now is the very, very edge. This this gross-looking place is called Kaled. Um, We're headed to the very edge of Kaled. I hate Kaled, which is why I'm going to save it for much later in the game. Um Kaled is not intended to be, it's, you're not intended to go there at the very beginning of the game anyway. Um, but we're going to go to just the very, very, very edge of Kaled. But this place is just gross. I hate it. And of course, it forces us to dismount our horse because we're about to get invaded. But before we get invaded, I'm going to go here and uh, trigger this um, side of grace. Just in case we die, we'll respawn right here. And this invader is not that hard. Um... Kind of just bait out the uh, attacks and then punish. But she does hit hard, as you can see. There we go. If you end up dying and you get this side of grace, you're going to respawn right here. So um, the penalty is not... Not that steep. So we got a talisman for killing her. The sacred scorpion charm raises holy attack, but it lowers your damage negation. So another trade-off. I'm not going to be using that. We got the nomadic warriors cookbook 14 and the missionary cookbook 3. So the real reason why we came to the edge of Kaled is because this counts as somewhere that's not Limgrave. Um, so this whole area that we've been exploring so far is Limgrave. Kaled does not count as Limgrave. Kaled is its own kind of separate area. Um, it's horrible. And uh, it's meant for much later in the game. So we're not going to come back here till much later. Um, but if you rest at this side of Grace, because it is outside of Limgrave, you're going to get an invitation. Forgive me. I've been testing you to determine if the Elden Ring would truly have you. If you had the metal to endure this long, 
and arduous path. It seems my worries were unfounded. Torrent had your measure from the very start, whereas I merely pretended. There is but one other thing I can do to offer you guidance. I can take you to the round table hold, gathering place of tarnished champions, guided by grace. All right, so our only option is to go as well. Very well. Let my hand rest upon you for but a moment. Okay, so this is Round Table Hold. This is the main hub of the game. Um, place where Tarnished Gather, Guided by Grace, combat is prohibited on the premises due to a pact of non-aggression. Um, this rule is effect when the Round Table icon is displayed. That Round Table icon is that little icon that you see on the left side of the screen, that kind of golden circle. That means that you cannot attack um, or use weapons in that area. A Round Table Hold is located outside of this world. It can only be reached through Sites of Grace. It can also be accessed by using the map to travel. So, uh, this is Roundtable Hold. This is our hub, main hub of the game. We're going to be coming here a lot. Um, so, how you get here is there is a couple triggers. One of them is if you get to Stormvale Castle. I think you have to at least beat Margit, which is the first boss of Stormvale Castle. I, I'm not positive. I think you might have to beat him or it might be right before you beat him. Another trigger is you have to rest at a Site of Grace outside of Limgrave, which is what we just did. We were uh, over here just on the very, 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 very edge of Kaled, and that counts. Um, and other other people will rest at a site north north of Limgrave up here, and that'll get you here as well. Um, so anyway, we're here, and uh, there's a lot of things to do here. So let's have a quick look around before we wrap up this episode here. Oh, this is a rare occasion. I can't remember the last time a new tarnished made their way to the round table. Very well. As your senior, I bid you welcome. It is safe here. You may let down your guard. Allow me a word of advice, as your senior. You are a mere visitor to the round table. Nothing more. A house guest. Yet to earn their keep. Remember your place, newcomer. There's nothing left. All righty. So over here... I see you've just arrived. Have another friend. Welcome to the round table hold. I'm Corin, a man of the cloth. I teach incantations, the strength granted us by the two fingers, and explore the secrets of the golden order, so that one day, if a tarnished of the round table hold should become Elden Lord, I might counsel them, ensuring order regains its proper form, writing rule over men. By the way, do you still see it? The guidance of grace. You do? Oh, wonderful news. Most tarnished are blind to it these days. You are something of a rare breed. Well, what do you say? Care to learn an incantation of the two fingers? All right, so he uh, will teach you some low-level incantations. I'm actually going to buy this one called Urgent Heal. It requires eight faith, which we have. And this is what I, I... I use this as a supplement to my flasks in emergencies uh, in case I need some extra healing in a pinch. So I'm going to buy that. We can't actually use it yet until we have a seal, which we're going to get a seal in the next episode. So I'm going to go ahead and purchase that. And so the way that uh, incantation, incantations and sorceries work is you have to equip them. So I'm going to go ahead and rest at this side of grace here and memorize the spell. Because when we get a seal, if you have this equipped, we'll be able to use it. Um, so in order to use spells in this game, you have to equip them at a site of grace somewhere. Um, so he uh, teaches us low-level incantations. He actually has a side quest that's pretty important. So... Um, but that's not going to really uh, get kicked off until later on in the game. And D has relocated. Uh, hell, you haven't gone to see Garank yet. Well, no rush. Just as long as he doesn't starve to death. Okay. So um, if if you access Roundtable Hold at the beginning of the game, he's actually just going to be here. Like, we, we found him on the map before we came here. Um, 
but uh, you, you can kind of skip that part of a side quest if you just come straight here to the round table hold at the beginning of the game. Like if you, you, can, you can go to a side of grace, you know, really early on in the game that's outside of Limgrave and, and you can come here much earlier than we did. But he will be here if you warp uh, earlier as well, even if you haven't met him on the, uh, the field. Just call me Dialos. The honor of one's house holds little import in these lands. By the way, have you met a young woman named Lanya on your travels? She's my servant, but fickle as the wind. Take your eyes off her for but a moment and she's good as gone. If you find her, please be sure to tell me. Be sure to tell me if you meet her. She's a servant, she's been my companion since I've lost count of the number of times I've had to... Honestly, she's such a little tomboy. Okay, so over here, uh, that's that, that's a side quest we'll be following later as well. Over here, you can actually jump over this railing. I'd advise against it because there's an invader down there who is going to invade you, and he's very difficult for this point in the game. Um, and, we, of course, when you jump over this railing, I mentioned you can't attack in Round Table Hole, but once you get down to the bottom, it actually allows you to. So uh, just be aware of that. We're going we're gonna to get that invader later on in the game, but not quite right now. So we're going to go over here. Talk to this guy. You get the what do you want gesture. Uh, what do you need? I have little time to spare. Oh, are you aggrieved at the notion you are but a visitant here? Then you would do well to remember the first words of grace given to you. Stand before the Elden Ring and become the Elden Lord. If those words held any meaning to you, follow the guidance of grace. Lay low the shard bearers and claim for yourself a great rune. Do so and the doors to the round tables in the chamber will open and you will receive the wisdom of the two fingers. All right, so this is Gideon. Um, throughout the game, he can give you hints as to where some stuff is. Um, down here, we have the merchant. So she sells rune arcs, which are very good, but not quite important yet. She sells also a memory stone. Um, you can use this to increase your uh, spell, uh, the, the number of spells you can equip at one time. So if you're a caster, this would be a good idea. She also sells some stone sword keys. Uh, can't pick any of those up yet, but we'll be getting all of those at some point. Um, what you can do is throughout the world, we're going to be getting items called bell bearings. And what they do is they unlock new uh, things that you can purchase at this merchant. This is going to be our main merchant of the game. Um, you can technically, the, the, the nomadic merchants that we encounter throughout the map, um, you can actually kill them, and when you kill them, they'll give you their bell bearing, and then you can give the bell bearing here, and, and basically this functions as an all-purpose merchant if you do that. I don't like killing the merchants, so, uh, but just letting you know, that is an option. So, over here, we have Fia. Would you allow me to hold you? But briefly, perhaps you might share with me some of your lively vigor and your stout heartedness. Doing so will grant me the warmth of a champion. And you, I am sure, will bear a Balderkin's blessing. Do you think it vulgar, perhaps? Where I come from, it is a sacred act. Okay, so she has a very important quest line that's tied to a lot of different things. So you definitely want to follow her quest line. You want to let her hold you. Ah, oh, my thanks, great champion. You are very warm. All right, so we got the Baldachin's blessing. So, what I felt light up inside you was a Baldachin's blessing, though it 
it is but a fleeting thing, I am afraid. Come back to me, should you require another. I will take you in my arms as often as you need. Okay. So, quick note. When she holds you, you get an item called the Baldekin's Blessing. Um, what that item does is it and it uses a little bit of FP to it temporarily boost your poise. Now, since we let her hold us, you'll notice if you look at the top left, we have a debuff. You see that square with the arrow pointing down? That means that our HP has been reduced because we let her hold us. Um, so what? How you how you deal with that is you have this Baldachin's blessing. If you want to use this later in the game, feel free. You can do so. If you don't want to use this later in the game, use it now. And when this item is gone from your inventory, the next time you rest, this debuff HP debuff is going to be gone. And you can come back to her whenever you want and get another one. She'll give you another hug. You'll get another blessing, and and but you'll get the debuff back. So I don't want this debuff. So I'm going to go ahead and use. Use the uh, item, and you'll see now that the uh, the debuff is gone. Um, so you have to let her hold you just to, to get her quest line started. So um, just just a quick word, and you can you can live with that debuff if you want if you want that item for later use. Um, I personally don't, so I get rid of the debuff right away. And and, and you and, and until you let her hug you again, you're not going to get that debuff back. So uh, just a quick little word about that. And so this is our blacksmith. So uh, he can strengthen our armaments. He can um, equip Ashes of War. He can actually also duplicate Ashes of War. Uh, you need a special item to do that. We can't do that yet. Um, we can also I talk to him. The chains. Nothing special. I'm a prisoner and these are my chains. I'm trapped by the hole. I'm dying, smithing for you fools. <laughs> That's all there is to it. Don't read too much into it. I have no grudge against you. My being a prisoner is no fault of yours. Besides, I don't mind smithing. Despite my differences, the weapons get stronger all the same. Given time, technique never fails. Besides, it helps me forget. The sheer terror of her. Okay. So, um... Remember, we, before we were upgrading our weapons at the smithing table here at the Church of Ella, but the highest you can get your weapons there is plus three. So if you smith your, if you upgrade your weapons here, um, you can upgrade them up to their max level as long as you have the uh, the runes and the upgrade materials to do so. So there's no cap to limit it to upgrading your uh, to the, you're upgrading your weapons to the maximum at this smithing table. Um, so we don't have the materials to upgrade our, our Bloodhound's Fang, uh, but we do have the materials to upgrade our longbow. So we take my longbow to plus two here. Um, so this is where we're going to be doing pretty much all of our up, uh, weapon upgrading from, from this point forward. We're not going to go back to that church and do it because, again, the church is very limited in how high you can upgrade your weapons. If you go down to the cellar here, you can turn around and there's a stone sword key door. I'm not going to open this one yet. I'm just going to make a little marker on the map to show, hey, there's a stone sword key door that I left unlocked. And actually, while I'm thinking about it, there is a stone sword key at the very beginning of the game that we didn't open up. And we're going to open up that up, open that up a bit later in the game. But I'm just making a mark on my map here just to show, hey, we need to come back and do this. Um, so behind the stone sword key door, there is a crossbow, which I'm not going to use, and also a prayer book, which I'm also not going to use, so I'm, I'm going to come back and get that stuff later. I don't want to waste my, my stone sword key doors on stuff that I'm not really going to use at this point in the game, but soon we'll have plenty of keys, and we won't really have to worry about that, so we'll come back and open that up. Um, so that's the gist of the roundtable hold for now. Uh, NPCs are going to come and go. There's going to be some different things that we can do here later on in the game, but that's just of it for now. So I'm going to go ahead and call this episode right here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Really appreciate y'all. Hope you guys are having a good time playing this game. And hope this walkthrough is helping you out and has proved to be useful. So thank you guys so much. Um, like, comment, subscribe, share this walkthrough with a friend. I uh, hope all of you guys have a great day. I'll catch you all next time.